Okay, so welcome everybody. It's Julian McNally from Active Living here in Melbourne, and I'm talking with uh, Julie Grove, who's in Sydney. Hi, Julie. Hi, Julian. And um, Julie's going to be working with myself and um, Matthew Smout and Rachel Collis um, in a few weeks' time for the ACT Sydney Skills Intensive. Yeah. And um, I saw in the, the discussions we've been having, Julie, you're planning to present on um, process-based therapy. Yeah, that's right. So why? Like, what's the what's the big draw card there? Uh, so, for me, process based therapy is a way of deepening our act work. Um, I work with a lot of act um, of people who are doing act and who are really skilled in uh, have, knowing the interventions, knowing the processes, having this incredible um, adherence to the model. And yet what process-based therapy gives us is this way of understanding overarching and ongoing processes that are going on for the client but also between us in the room and that will serve the client going forward so that we can actually deepen the work that we're doing with the six core processes of ACT. Okay. So, I mean, if I'm a, an experienced ACT practitioner coming on mm. this workshop, um, I mean, people watching the video can find out about um, what the rest of us are offering uh, through yeah. watching these other interviews that we're, we're doing. But yeah. um, what what's the thing that they'll get over and above what they might already get from like another ACT workshop, even like an advanced ACT workshop that they might do somewhere else? Sure. So my sense of what we're going to be doing is loads and loads of, um, of work on... Um, Actually, Julian, can we stop this? Yeah, sure. I just need to, can you ask me a different question to yeah. start? Can we start with the first couple of questions? Oh, sure, sure. And lead us into that? Yeah, that's okay. Hang on. I'll, Does that I'll, make sense? Actually, look, it doesn't matter. I'll just keep recording because now it's All right. recording. That's fine. Okay. I can edit this bit out. All right. Okay. Yep. All right. So I'll, um, so I'll I think the intro the and just go straight to the question. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. you talked. About what was what we were looking forward to about the workshops. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I just <laughs> like, like that. <laughs> okay. okay. So, Julie, um, what are you looking forward to about this workshop? Uh, so, I think any time that the uh, CBS community comes together is uh, really special. Um, so, just having two days to be in that conversation and learn from each other and the participants. It's just really exciting and that's what I'm interested in uh, in those two days. Uh, I also think it's just, um, you know, this opportunity for the four of us to offer different perspectives on ACT, for the folks in the room to be able to see how we use this work every day in our, in our roles is just really valuable. Um, and I think it'll be fun. I think we'll mm -hmm. have a lot mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so why, why do you think practitioners should come to this workshop as opposed to other ACT trainings that are available? So I think what will end up happening in these two days is that it will almost be like an extensive supervision session where folks can really get, um, get deeper into the work, uh, can ask lots of questions, can learn off each other, um, can bring case studies, case you know things that they're struggling with. Um, I also think that they will we'll need to bring a lot of willingness. I think um, I think some of the stuff that we'll be doing will ask them to be you know, open, um, willing, engaged to really explore what they're bringing as therapists to the ACT work as well, mm -hmm. not just adherence to a model. Yeah. yeah, I like that idea of um, it being almost like an extended supervision. And in fact, I think in my discussion with, with Matt, we touched on that, that, um, you know, people are coming and getting four of the most experienced ACT practitioners. Mm -hmm. So much, you know, trainers, we've all got different levels of training experience, but it's kind of like, um, we do this stuff day to day. Um, we do it every day. You know, dozens of people every week or month. So, yeah, yeah totally. 
And I think also, you know, it's different. Um, it's different going to an ACT training and learning about the model and learn. Like, there are some amazing ACT trainers in the world when you go to conferences or the folks that come out here. But but going back to your therapy room and trying it out and, uh, you know, being clunky and awkward and having varying success yeah. is a really different kettle of fish. And I think for us to be able to talk about what it's really like to do ACT work um, for us as well, like what's it like for us to be ACT therapists, you know, what does that require of us? That's kind of different, I think, as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That'll be a nice opportunity to talk about that. Yeah, that's um, what, what you were just saying about the feeling clunky when you go back and try this out. I mean, I, I kind of asked the other two about um, how do you kind of come away from a workshop, you know, really excited about what you've learned. Yeah. But then, yeah, Monday morning you've got to put it into practice. Um, yeah. How do you then continue to grow? I, I don't know if you've thought about that or... Um, you know, if that's something you, you plan to address in the, the segment you'll be doing. I think all of us will yeah. be. But, yeah, I think good. all of us will be. I also think there might be some opportunity over the two days to, to form networks that will be able to go beyond the two days. Because um, I think the way to embed this stuff in your practice, to to try things out, to get support, is to be surrounded by other people who you're willing to kind of fail in front of or share stuff in front of. So if we can create some kind of ongoing network for folks, that would be fantastic. Yeah, that would be great. I mean, that's something that, um, like, I wouldn't be where I am as an ACT practitioner without the um, peer supervision group that uh, Russ Harris helped me start down right. here many years ago. But um, right. other groups it's like that pretty- setting up. Yeah, it's so critical. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, um, another thing I wanted to ask, I mean, my, you know, the whole the whole process-based therapy thing has come from mm-hmm. different pays, right? And um, mm-hmm. I find there's a tendency with uh, Steve's stuff for it to be, how can we say, sort of wordy, very heady, theory-oriented, which yeah, is great, yeah. you know, like we all acknowledge that's necessary. But um, I guess I want to know to what extent what you're presenting will be theory versus practice. Right. So um, you're right, Steve Hayes is um, talking a lot about process-based therapy at the moment. And Robin Walzer is as well. She's just brought out a very beautiful new book. Oh, yeah. um, fact. Um, so my session is going to be very experiential. I mean, one of the things that I think I notice with people that I supervise is we mostly follow a trajectory on how we learn ACT. So we go to a few workshops, we read some books, we get really clear about the model. You know, Kirk Strozel tells us to get three interventions around each of mm-hmm. the six core processes to develop our, cool, our, our toolkit. Um, and so, you know, we might learn some RFT and some analysis and that, and we get really good at the model. And I, for me, process-based therapy is a way of listening and hearing beyond the content, not only of what a client's saying to us, but also of the model. So, you know, we get to um, we get to look at what the function of behaviour is in each moment that we're engaging with the client. And this is where it really overlaps beautifully with the FAP stuff that Rachel... I was just and- thinking that, yeah. So we start to slice up our sessions really finely and and not not kind of go over the top of a client with content. We we hold content, but we we hold process the whole time. Mm -hmm. What is it that's going on between me and the client in this moment? How is what I'm doing shaping what the client's doing? What from their learning history are they bringing into this moment? And what can we do almost irreverently? You know, how can we break the rule of therapy sometimes, break the rule of social convention Mm -hmm. and talk the process in the room rather than respond in a very mindy way that's content? And so we can, you know, when we're doing that, we can bring in a whole lot of processes and interventions. And that's not wrong, but to deepen that act work, we'd be looking at the intrapersonal aspects what's going on for me as a therapist Mm -hmm. the interpersonal aspects what's happening between me and the client in time 
and also this overarching and ongoing process. What is this client bringing from their learning history? What's happening right now in the room? Is that getting enacted out? And what does that mean for the future? So for me, it deepens what's going on. It's a way of, um, well, Robin Walsh talks about using your heart and your feet. So it's really about listening with a, with a, with a heartfelt sense of being a therapist. Yeah. Gee, that sounds beautiful. I'm really looking forward to this. <laughs> I think it'll be. I think it'll be loads of fun, and I think it'll be. Um, you know, one of the things that I also want to think about or talk with folks about is how much do we have to do the work in order to be masterful at therapists? You know, because um, being a therapist is certainly not, there's nowhere to get to, right? Like this is one of the things. You know, people will come to me and go, "Oh, I've got it now." It's like, no, we never get it. You know, yeah, it's this yeah. ongoing process. The work's never done, which is kind of exciting to me, actually. Um, so, We got lost, didn't we? Yeah. Um, got cut off. You were saying the work is never done. The work is never done. Yeah. Um, and and I and how much how much of the work do we have to do to be competent act therapists as well? Mm -hmm. You know, the act stance is not about I'm doing therapy to you, mm -hmm. but we are here together in this conversation on this journey. So that requires something different from me too. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> like I said, I'm really looking forward to this now. <laughs> oh, good. I think it'll be fun. Yeah. Hey, um, just before I wind up, Julie, I, um, I've sort of uh, put on the bottom of uh, the other videos with Matt and Rachel, their websites. So your website is juliegrovespsychology.com? Psychology.com. Yeah. Yep. Right. Okay. Any, uh, any goodies on there for the viewers like they can go to right now? Aha, <laughs> uh -huh, no, but we can put something up there, that's, that's for sure. Yeah, I think, okay. um, and also, we'll, I imagine we'll put a lot of stuff up on the ANZ ACBS um, yeah. website, you know, post uh, workshops and handouts, some ideas, some practices, that kind mm -hmm. of thing. Mm -hmm. Lots of goodies for folks. Yeah, that'll be great. Okay. Well, thank you very much for taking the time today. And, um, okay. I'm really looking forward to catching up with you in February. It'll be it'll be great. We'll have I think I think this workshop will be unique and it will, you know, the four of us working together, I think, you know, we've all been around the work a long time as well, but we have this very beautiful unique perspective on how we do the work mm -hmm. and um I think that'll be really valuable for folks. Yeah, okay. Let's bring that. Yeah. Yay. Okay. Thanks again, Julie. See you later. I'm not going to hang up. I'll just stop the recording. Oh, good. <laughs>